Hello friends, welcome to the Smart Engineering Academy. So in this session, we are going to cover these four important topics. So now let us study first one that is starret elongation. So starret elongation means the star is said to be elongation. See here you can see the star. Star is said to be elongation when it is greatest distance either from the east or west. So now the position of the star is here. So according to this picture, the star is at a greater distance from the east. Okay. So in case you can take position of the star is here. Okay. At that time, the position of the star, the star is at a greater distance from the west. Okay. So this condition, if it is at a greater distance from the east, then it is called as eastern elongation. In case if you take this position, if this position of the star is greatest distance from the west, then it is called as western elongation. And this is meridian. Okay. The star will be at the meridian. Now we'll come into the definition. A star is said to be elongation when it is greater distance either from east or west of the meridian. Okay. So, you know, this is what we call as meridian. In this position, azimuth of the star is more. So that means, see, this is normal picture. I'll just tell you what is azimuth. This we also studied in the part one of the video. So if this is the observer, if this is the observer and here is a star. Okay. From this point to this point, this is called as altitude from the north. This is called as azimuth. If I can take the same situation here, here is the observer and this will be my altitude. Okay. Then azimuth means from here to north. This is azimuth. And they're telling in this position, azimuth of the star is more. You can see the azimuth of the star is more in this condition. And next important concept is diurnal circle is tangent through the vertical through the star. First of all, what is diurnal circle? See, if you can see this figure, this is called as great circle. That also we had studied in the part one. Okay. So these two small circles are called as diurnal circle. If I can draw one diurnal circle over here, diurnal circle is the path of the star. And if this is zenith, if I take some point over here, this is perpendicular. See if this is the vertical and this is perpendicular or tangent that only they are telling diurnal circle is tangent to the vertical through the star, through the star it is tangent to the vertical. So this is all about starret elongation. See in this you can understand bit clear and we can do some derivation with respect to Napier's rule. See for Napier's rule that has been explained in the part two of the video. And once again, I will explain here clearly. So I told you this is the diurnal circle. It is also called as path of the star. So my position of the star is over here. Okay. So in this picture also same thing. This is Eastern elongation. That is the position of the star is greater distance from the E. Then it is called as Eastern elongation. See, this is 90 degree and this is the position of zenith. So according to this figure, you know, this is altitude. So if this is altitude, then this is complement of altitude that is 90 minus alpha. So this will be the complement of declination. So if this is the latitude that is theta, the complementary angle that is here, I can write it as 90 minus theta. So the same spherical triangle I had taken and written over here expandingly. Co altitude, co latitude, and co declination. So, this is called a spherical triangle because one of the side of this sphere that is spherical triangle is 90 degree. So, this is right angle spherical triangle. Okay. So, if there is a variation of angles, that is, if any one of the angle is not 90 degree. If there is a variation in the angles, then it is called as normal spherical triangle. If it has 
any one of the side any one of the three sides is 90 degree then it is called as right angle spherical triangle then if it is right angle spherical triangle then the napier's rule can be applied the motto of the napier's rule is the art of writing this circle okay so that involves napier's rule i'll just explain you once again how to write these values in this circle see here the same thing what we have done in the previous napier's rule see if this is the angle a then complementary of this is 90 minus a if this is the angle h the complementary of this is 90 minus h so if i am starting from 90 minus delta i am just writing 90 minus delta here okay so so here is 90 minus alpha okay that i am writing here then 90 minus h is here that i am writing here then this opposite side 90 minus delta opposite side is 90 minus a okay here opposite side i am writing 90 minus a over here so now all these four things how to write you people came to know so this one is very important here see here so this opposite side i am substituting here see here 90 minus of 90 minus theta that means this 90 90 cancels minus into minus plus i can take it as theta and this theta will be written here so now by this concept by the napier's rule concept the circle is ready so according to napier's rule if you are taking sine of the any middle part if i am considering for example if i am considering this as the middle part if sine of the middle part will be tangent of okay tangent of product of adjacent parts okay the product of these two parts that is in terms of tangent okay then one more type we can write is again sine of the middle part can also be written as it is the product of cosine of opposite parts clearly see here if i am taking this as the middle part this will be these two will be the adjacent of this middle and these two will be the opposite parts if i am taking sine over here okay if i am take considering adjacent parts this is the product of this part and this point that is in terms of tangent okay sine according to the sine the tangent of adjacent parts or if you are taking the opposite parts then it will be the product of cosine product of cosine of opposite parts and product of tangents of adjacent parts okay in these two terms we can write this concept i also explained in napier source that is in part two of my video so now let us i am taking this as my middle part and deriving my equation so sine of 90 minus h will be equal to tangent of if it is tangent then it is adjacent parts okay if it is cosine then it is opposite parts so now i am taking in terms of tangent that is tangent of adjacent parts that is product of tangent of adjacent parts that is tan of 90 minus delta into theta now you can clearly understand that is product of it is in terms of tangent then product of adjacent parts that is tangent of this thing i had written sorry this is tan theta okay in case for example if i am writing sine of 90 minus h in terms of opposite parts if i am considering opposite parts then i can write is it is cosine of 90 minus alpha into cos of 90 minus a okay so these are the two formats that we can write so now i will derive the expression for this expression okay sine of 90 minus x is sorry 
sin of 90 minus x is cos x that is I can write this as cos h which is is equal to tan of 90 minus x is cot x that I can write it as cot delta into tan theta I will just take it as expression 1 similarly now I am taking this theta theta as the middle part then see I am writing sin theta and I am write, taking opposite terms ok so that means it will be cos of 90 minus delta ok into again cos of 90 minus alpha ok the product of cosine terms opposite cosine terms so now again sin theta is equal to same thing cos of 90 minus x is equal to cos x that I will write as cos delta into cos of so sorry cos of 90 minus x is sin x that I am writing it as sin delta into again cos of 90 minus x is sin x I can write it as sin alpha I will just take it as expression 2 in these terms I can write I can consider any thing as a middle part and the adjacent thing can be written in terms of tan as well as cos. So I think now the star at elongation is clear to you. Now let us move on to the next concept.